The election of November 18, 2017 is a referendum on our future. It is an election that will determine the direction of Anambra State. Um, that determination, that the direction Anambra State will go on November 18 is between the modern and the archaic. It's between the unphilosophical governance that is going on now and a government that is grounded in the philosophies that will build a new culture. It is a struggle between the old corrupt structures of rigging structures of old governance to birthing a new modern transparent governance. So Anambra State on 18 have a choice, a choice to be on the right side of history or a, a choice to remain in the status quo, which is the status quo remains largely means um, the current state of affairs, a state of affairs that means that Anambra people do not know how many houses, for instance, exist in Anambra. Anambra people do not know with certainty how many schools are in Anambra. Anambra people do not know with certainty what are the local differences between the schools, the ones in Ayam Elum local government and the ones in Idemili not local government. Anambra people cannot make a choice between which hospital to go to that gives you this type of service or that type of service. Anambra people are largely entrepreneurial people and yet we're losing our edge in the business world. Uh, the shop rights of this world, the new big box trailers, um, retailers are coming and that will deal a great blow if we don't turn a corner now. And the time is now. We need the fierce urgency of the now to move that form. Here comes Inosita Chidoka and the UPP. We present an alternative narrative. We present an alternative platform for people to go at the basic substructure of this, of this platform, at the basis of our philosophy and our governance model, is number one, the philosophical foundation. And there we say, we need the three, the triple concepts of Uche, the concept of knowledge, of intellect, of wisdom, of discernment. Then we have Uchu, the concept of hard work, of persistence, of perseverance, of nobility in work, which the Ibos are renowned for. We have respect for hard work. Then the concept of ebuchuku, morality. Sitting side by side with this is equity for all, making sure that the state works for everybody. The state creates access for the poor, the dispossessed, the angry, the young people of today who tomorrow's world is looking more and more difficult for. The young people today, whose today's world means that they are not going to find it easy with the skills of yesterday to operate in tomorrow's economy. And we believe that we must have an eye for the future. We must transcend geography. We must transcend tribe and tongue to build a state that is a home for all, a state that allows the top talents of this country to migrate to Anambra in pursuit of good quality education, in, in, in pursuit of good quality infrastructure that allows them to, um, to unfold their talents. So at this foundation, we build on it another one, a four-step pyramid. That four-step pyramid is what we call KNIVES, K-N-V-E-S. K-N standing for knowledge, V standing for vision, E standing for execute, and S standing for sustain. So, we need to have knowledge. We need to have a baseline. We need to know where we are. Then we need to know where we're going to. The moment we go through all the sectors of Anambra State, our healthcare facility, our education facility, our market, our industrial output, our power consumption pattern, we will need to find out in practical terms what and what do we have. Our cities, how are they developing? What is the morphology of the development of our cities? What's the trajectory of our transport system? Do we have a proper integrated internal transport system? Then when we look at all of this in the concept of knowledge, we develop a baseline. And this will take us the first um, quarter one and quarter two of 2018 
to conduct, and this will be an employment period for young people. Because we are going to create young university graduates, youth coppers, even graduates and um, undergraduates will be used to do um, data collection. We will send them out in the state. We will build applications for them to go collect data. We're going to geomap all the houses in Anambra. We are going to sit down and develop the Anambra map from the ground up. And we are going to work with the, the Googles of this world to develop an Anambra map. We will name all our streets. We will number all our houses. We will put a zip code on top of them from the national zip code system. So that will mean citizen identification. As we are doing that, we will also know our citizens. We don't need to conduct a census. All we care with is, do you have any form of national ID, the voter's card, the driver's license, the international passport, any national ID you have, we want to recapture it and issue you a resident card. So as we gather all this knowledge, we will then look at each sector and find out who are the key stakeholders in this sector. Once we identify the stakeholders, then we map out a shared vision. This is where Anambra is today. This is where Anambra wants to be tomorrow. How do we get there? All the stakeholders are involved. An example is our schools. Our schools, from all we know now, have dilapidated classrooms, have classrooms that are not working. How do we take this up notch? How do we move it from where it is to where we want, we want it to be? Then with the stakeholders, after we map out the shared vision, we go into the execution. A, map, a shared vision in one quarter, I believe by quarter three, we will have a shared vision. While this is going on, simultaneously, is identifying the government agency with the responsibility to deliver these services. Then we will take a census of the staff, of their capabilities, of what they can do. In doing that, we will be able to have an execution capability. So we know whether we are outsourcing the execution, we are going to do it with the communities, we are going to do it with the public service, we are going to have it with an agency of government. Those agencies must have the capacity to execute a large vision. And then, of course, with that, we will then begin to work at sustainability. How do we sustain this in the long run? How do we ensure that any, any miles we have conquered will now have to go back there again with another government in Anambra State? So that leads us to knowledge, vision, um, execution, and sustainability. As we build that model, and everybody in the state is engaged, Everybody is involved in mipping up to map out a shared vision. Town hall meetings are holding on. In between those activities, we will be reviewing all the projects going on in the state, prioritizing them, and kicking off and making sure contractors are paid on time, making sure that contractors are back on site, making sure that cost overruns are controlled, and also auditing our government capabilities. And then, at the final of this, running diagonal to this is our model for implementation, which I call the M squared I. We need to monitor, we need to measure, and we need to implement. So we need to make sure that everything we are doing is captured and an accountability framework designed for the state's people to track where we are on this plan. How are they going to track it? We're going to have a call center you can call in to ask questions. We're going to domesticate the Freedom of Information um, Act in Anambra State. You can freely ask for information in Anambra State. And then we're going to ensure that we measure. Based on our projection and based on where we are, we're going to give the state a quarterly report based on the plans we have brought out, the budget, the state plans. This is where we are quarter by quarter. It will be available on the state website. All the information that the state have will be available on the state website. And even where you want to know more, you can do a freedom of information request. I'm going to sign an agreement with budget to make sure that our budget transparency is heightened, that people in Anambra State can have access to information on our budget. On top of that is when we monitor, when we measure, then we will improve. We will make sure that there is constant improvement in this. So basically, this is the framework of governance that will drive our government mechanics. This thing will be applied to every sector. So I will take a few sectoral issues now and just give an idea of what we will do in those sectors. 
For instance, we need to reform our public service. We can't reform our public service. We can't have great plans without reforming our public service. And we can't reform it without going back to auditing our public sector. So we're going to take a baseline. How many people do we have? What are the educational capabilities? Which ministry has education people? Do they have education experts? People in the healthcare sectors who are those driving the healthcare? In the transport ministry, how many people have our qualified transport experts? When we do that, we're going to set up as our first initiative a public service academy. The public service academy offers us opportunity to bring back everybody in the public service in batches and train them on ICT, train them on the bureaucracy of the future, train them on the new tools of government that we are bringing out, and this training will be going simultaneously with their daily work. We are going to introduce a certification program for the IC, on ICT for the government staff. In doing this, our major goal is to build a public sector that thinks for the state, that sustains the implementation framework of the state, that is able to drive a governor to achieve the destiny of Anambra State. As we do that, building a public service academy, reskilling our civil service, we will also talk about their remuneration. We are going to tie their basic remuneration to ensure that they are in the top 10 of, an, of Nigeria at the beginning stage. They are in the top 10 to ensure that at this top 10 of remuneration, Anambra State Civil Service have enough remuneration to ensure that they deliver quality outcomes. We're going to talk about non-cash remuneration. We're going to talk about housing loan for our civil servants. We're going to talk about car loans for our civil servants. We're going to talk about um, school fees support for our civil servants. We're going to talk about a health insurance scheme that at the end of the day, the civil servant of Anambra and the reform of the civil service will be fundamental. We're not going to be constrained by the national standards. We're going to rename our civil service structure. We're going to make sure that our civil service structure reflects the plan for tomorrow. And we'll be at liberty working with stakeholders, the unions, to begin to map out a new vision for our civil service. And now, why that is imperative is that the current government of Anambra State, in its sheer agreement that our public service is not working, decided on a 20 million naira project per community, allow the community to think out their own project, allow them to bring a local contractor, allow them to bring a consultant that will monitor the project or they produce a consultant. In all of this, the public sector is seen to be incapable, it seems not to have the ability to deliver. It is the frustration with the public sector, obviously, that led to going to the communities and saying, you two can do projects. But I believe that no society can be sustained without an integrated plan, without a civil service that looks at the future. So like this, we will go through all sectors. In education, we will ensure that we see whether we can match an umbrella to take the PISA exam. PISA is the program for international student assessment done by the OECD countries. But these days, they're allowing countries, other countries to join. And they're allowing provinces of a country to join to be able to standardize and test how students, 15 year olds in a country, what do they know and rank them with their peers across the world. I want an umbrella education to rank with our peers around, across the world. And PISA is one of the projects, initiatives we have to see that Anambra education is not only a higher than the Nigerian standard, but is world class. At our tertiary level, we're going to look at the concept of affiliating our state university to a foreign university. The whole idea again being allowing Anambra people to join the global market. On ICT, we're going to rethink the ICT. We're going to map the ICT um, footprints in Anambra State. We're going to look at the, the fiber cable footprint on the left and right side of the Enugu on the Express Road are fiber cables by different companies. We're going to take it from there to all our secondary schools and to all our tertiary institutions, including private universities and all our key markets. The idea being, just like the way we see roads as an infrastructure for movement, so do we see the ICT as an infrastructure for carrying the data traffic of Anambra people. So we don't see ICT as, a, as, a, as just um, a money-making service, but we see it as an investment in moving people away from the old forms of their traffic to the new levels of traffic. So once we are able to put, begin to view the internet infrastructure as part of our road traffic, as a part of our road transport, we believe that Anambra will begin to attract 
young people who want to write applications. We begin to attract a new set of young businessmen, a new set of young entrepreneurs who will see Anambra as the home of IT innovation. And I believe that will turn around the story of the state as a net um, collector of human talent. Anambra State today is a net exporter of human talent. Once our young children pass away from secondary school, which, by the way, cost the government almost 800,000 naira to train one student through junior secondary and then about in the senior secondary. So we think that after this training and going to the universities around here, we need to retain the brains here. Anambra has to be in the competition for top talent. Currently, the talent um, truths of Nigeria, the talent hotspots in Nigeria is Lagos, Portacot, and Abuja. And I think this triangle is reflected by the traffic in the airlines. The airport traffic is Lagos, Abuja morning flights, Abuja, um, Lagos, and Lagos, Port Harcourt. But we need to turn Nigeria into a square. A square that says Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and Anambra. How do we do that? We want to inject ourselves in the talent war. We want to be the home of talent. We want to rebuild and remap our state to become part of a square and to cut the triangle into a square. And the competition for talent is tough because today Nigerians are sitting in Nigeria and working for global companies. So we need to ensure that Anambra is a net beneficiary of the talent hut in the world. At a political level, we are going to abolish state of origin in our states. Anybody who resides in Anambra, who pays taxes in Anambra, will be entitled to our in-state tuition, will be entitled to all the facilities of Anambra State, will be able to compete, feel in any federal government examination, public service interview, you can feel Anambra as your state of origin as a, because we will be fighting the federal government to remove that from its documents. We want to hear the, about the state of residence. The Nigerian state, the Nigerian identity is superior to other subnational identities. So having a Nigerian citizenship offers you all the rights and privileges across Nigeria. So we believe that Anambra State under my watch will begin to push for us to identify as a nation what do we owe Nigerians? We owe them freedom of choice. We owe them the capacity to live anywhere in Nigeria, thrive and be happy, and also to grow and enjoy all the facilities of that state. So you are, from, you are not from Anambra, you live in Anambra, you can be a judge in our state. You can be the chief judge of Anambra state. Nothing will preclude you from achieving any heights in Anambra public service so long as you live here and pay taxes here. So in summary, I think that our plan is granular. Our vision is grand. Our capacity is strong. Our dreams are dreams of the future. And we want to stand on the famed knowledge of Anambra people, on the famed capacity, entrepreneurial capacity on, of Anambra people, to stand on the shoulders of our heroes past and to dream about a future so glorious that I call on Anambra people to join me in this vision. I call on Anambra people to join me in this journey to redefine and remap our state. I call on Anambra people to know that the beginning of great nations are in simple small steps, are in the vision of a great leader, of a leader who doesn't think of today but thinks about tomorrow, of a leader who thinks of a state not as an opportunity for a retirement benefit but as an opportunity to etch your name in the annals of history, to put your steps on the sands of time and to say with with joy as you look back at the past and to say, yes, we can. It's our state problem. We can sustain our state um, progress. We can make our state a model state. And in making our state a model state, we are driven by three Igbo concepts. We are driven by Uche, the concept of knowledge. We are driven by Uchu, the concept of hard work. We are driven by Eguchuku, the concept that there needs to be morality back in our society. And finally, we need to monitor, we need to measure, and we need to improve the facilities in our state. There is no other way to achieve success. You cannot achieve it by distributing state funds. You cannot achieve it by appealing to our base instincts. You cannot achieve it by just sitting down and talking about the old ways of doing things. You can only achieve it by a vision that captures today, that reflects tomorrow, and of course, that dreams about a future that is not constrained by the problems of today. So in the Anambara, the choice is yours. Are you going to stand in the right side of history? Are you going to go out 
on November 18 and cast your vote for UPP, the party of the future, the party that has put self-determination as part of his manifesto, the party that have said the concept of Nigeria must continuously be renewed, the party that have said there is no need for street agitations for Ndibo. Ndibo needs to come back into the political process and engage the rest of the country. We cannot be shy of engaging the country. We cannot, be, we cannot engage the country enough. We need to continue to engage the country, to express our views in a legitimate way, to join the capacity of democracy to um, bring people together, to bring negotiation together and create a nation where no man is oppressed. I believe that November 18 is the date of that referendum. And anybody who casts his vote for UPP is casting a vote for the future. Vote UPP in the November 18 election. Vote for Isiago. Vote for the Tiger. Vote for the party that has promised you a new life. November 18 is our date with history. And that date, we ask Ndi Anambara to please vote UPP. We need to up our game. Ndibai, Anuma Yunu. Na November 18, Bobo Siakalaka. As in Aya de Leonion Gol, Aya Calaca de Leonion Gol. Oh, but I gave you where Potter, where we like a Binebes Eliciago, where to Alundi UPP. Party say, No Nundi, Baga, no Nundi, Bo Nigeria. I got no Nundi, Bo Nigeria. Party say, Nafaga, Bacaca, where GC came in, no Nundi, Bobo, Nebobo, no Nigeria, Nigga, Bunga, Madi Nigeria, No Guama de Ganania. Party say, Nagi, Dosia number. I get whip watch it, number and I get my comb why. I get whip watch it, now that in Yanya, need for game a Kailua number state to get the Mamaco Nobuna, a number agabu in your Bonyani, a number agabu in your Bonya Bonyo Galaya, a number agabu do in your Bona no number, Gamania Bonya, so not your number. A number of Bobo, I get you che, if age Malundibo. I get you too. If age you tie in a Nigerian and Dibo Bundana Bombo, I get you Guchuku with the number. Obu ni kwado na egeji uche na uchu na egwuchukwu. Obu ni kwado na egeji anambara we bulo obodo na amato na Nigeria. Obu no na icho ka anambara bulo obodo osita chidoka ga bu governor anambara. Onye geji umo Colombia, onye geji uche, onye geji uchu na egwuchukwu we dozi anambara. Anu ma yoge November 18. Kipota tunyelu UPP. Kipinyaka ebe selisiago. Ife na yonda anambara, obu na ibinyaka ebe selisiago. Oga dilo boda imma, oga dila Anambra State imma, oga dila Nigeria imma. Makana ndi UPP, mundega kusi ike, choti ife ndi ibo cho, kowale ande Nigeria. Mwale ife ande Nigeria ni uku makandi ibo, kowale ande ibo. Nuka anu wabu nkwa nene kwe ndi ibo. Anu meku unu nkwa. Ne ego wabu nabe ego government ya Anambra State. Icho ayo make isi elega Anambra State. Icho ayo make isi wewe lega Anambra lo wala Anambra lo, ijua ya ajojo. I get work all sent a bong on a phone. I get in your online na website. I get in your WhatsApp. Only a bong for every quarter. Guys, we spend the guy number of states. I get in the obodo ni ne di chiche we lo lo. I get in the age grade no obodo. Age grade obodo na wapata lato matu dema. Government get in your gonia. Ke we dozi our communities. I get in the town union. We poko obodo malefa de fampa. Mana tu po aya ne ne gonia. I get mu fe di aya mpa across the state. Obli fe badolo ona aku ko ka ege dozi nara. Obodo ni ne dozi ona aku ko di na befa. Obli fe badolo ndi afia ka ege alo di siye. Obodo ni ne dozi afia di na befa. Ka ege wemale na aro abo na gafe. Ndi anambara dozi lo fi fe na anambara. Across obodo ni ne di na anambara. A ege ewe an integrated program. A ege ewe program uji kolo nyo abo na ono. Webuli fe ga habo. Onye anambara ebo na ebo abo na ino. Ima ana aro abo. Dozi e una aku ko di na obodo unu. Ndi wole ego na anambara ga apota wuse. Na ye ge dozi ofo na akukwa na ara nwa before ara na ogu nda anambra ge na anya na azu se yes na ifo obu na gbasala na akwa na anambra na edozi ge so an ma yo nda anambra ko no puta na november 18 tunyelu government bu anambra na obi tunyelu government cho lot di manda anambra afa mbo si ta chidoga an ma yuno tunyelu no upp ebe selisiago na november 18